So, um, as I say, there, I'm Alan Knabe. Um, I'm a Brexit refugee hiding here in Finland. Um, so, I've been in Finland now for just under a year working with Connor on their API program. Uh, before that, I was uh, six years or so uh, in Switzerland working with Swisscom, where we had uh, quite a successful API program. So, the idea is that I'm bringing all my knowledge now into Finland, which is uh, good. Um, this is a little bit about Connor today. Um, actually, is anyone here who's never heard of Connor? Okay, well, that's two, so I suppose I better say something then. So, we make elevators and escalators, and we're great at it. We make the best in the world, right? That, that's about it, I think. Um, okay, so to kick things off then, um, this is basically, you know, saying the state of where we're at now, right? When we talk about um, digitized things, right? We're, we're at a point now, uh, not just in the UK, but here in Finland, everywhere, where pretty much everything is digitized, right? So you've got, uh, instead of getting letters, you get like PDF sent in email accounts. Instead of brushing your teeth with, you know, an old plastic toothbrush, you have an electric toothbrush, for example. Um, this is like the, the core digitization of everything, right? And as we move forwards, you can see it's like a pyramid going up. We have like um, a digitalization, which is where we look at the processes and digitalize everything. And then at the very top up there is the good stuff. That's the, um, you know, digital transformation, right? And digital transformation is um, where we want to be, right? Because that's where we're making more money, new business models, etc. cetera. Um, and APIs are considered a pivotal part of that transformation. So this has been said many times over the last couple of days, so I don't need to reiterate it. But if you want to do new cool stuff, then you pretty much need to be using uh, APIs. So just to step back in time a little bit, this is how we used to do things. So when, when we ran our first uh, API portal back in like 2011, 2012, you used to just basically say, OK, well, let's get a bunch of like assets throw them up on a developer portal, and uh, wait. Yeah, that's, that was pretty much it, right? That's what we used to do. And, uh, you know, you'll be waiting a long time, right? This is, this is pretty much like a, a common thing now that, you know, we kind of realize and get a bit more savvy about what you actually need to do to produce something that your customers and partners actually want, right? Um, being a bit provocative, if I look at the uh, developer.mercedes-benz website, I look at that, and it's one of the most beautiful sites you can see, right? I love it, right? But I really get the feeling they're trying first this throw stuff up and seeing, you know, you see they even write on there. If you are using our APIs and you think it's great, then let us know, right? So I, I think this is more or less the strategy they have right now. Um, so what can you do then? Okay, so, you know, you've heard it many times, right? Exposing the value. Right? You've got to really look at the, the value that your organization has and can bring, right? um, starting with the why, not the what. So you know, why are you doing these things? Right? Um, and looking at like, the mission uh, of your organization, um, the value proposition. Right? So really down to the level of like, you know, your target customer segment, and I'll come back to this in a, a little bit later as well for an example. Um, but what are the business goals of the, the API you're trying to produce, right? And of course, you've heard it a few times, maybe it's sunk in now, but uh, we try to treat these things as products nowadays, right? So if you're just exposing APIs to developers, um, sure, that can work, but if you're trying to do this whole digital transformation thing, then um, you can use a product basically as a vehicle to get you where you want to be, right? So MuleSoft finally caught up a little bit in this train. Um, and they have like this, this quote that I found, and uh, I, I kind of like it, right? It, it, basically, what we're saying here is that instead of having like, you know, multiple projects trying to produce APIs, what we're going to go ahead and do is say, okay, we, we have products, and again, we use them as like this vehicle, this long-lived vehicle that somebody loves to continuously um, provide value, um, and, and to make it better as time goes by. Um, that's what we're trying to do. This may be a challenge, right? So it's easy to stand up here and say, yeah, productize everything, right? But again, most organizations that are out there today, um, 
we, we run on projects, right? And Conley is, is pretty much no different at the moment, right? So you, you've got more and more projects starting up every day, basically. And the organizations are not really geared up to, to work in this more of this like product mentality, right? So it's basically, okay, well, how much money do you need? Uh, okay, and you've got six weeks to deliver it, right? It's, it's like this you know, project mentality. So the organization isn't really uh, set up to, to deal with like, you know, these projects that go on, that, so these products that live for a very long time, right? So from an organizational perspective, that's hard. And also conceptually, it's very hard to, to talk about APIs as products. So when we were at Swisscom, I would you know, talk to my developers and say, hey guys, you know, I want to create a new API product. And they looked at me and they were like, what? <laughs> you know, no clue, right? The developers had no clue. It took about two years. And even then, I think they were just, you know. Um, so it, it's quite hard to conceptualize what we mean as a, an API product, right? And if you're Steve Jobs and you've got an iPhone in your hand, right? That's a product, right? And people can look at it and they can touch it and feel it. And say, it's a product, right? Even if you're like, uh, let's say, Rovio software, and you're producing games, and you can download them to the phone, you can see the game, it has a GUI. Um, APIs, generally speaking, don't have GUIs, right? They're, they're kind of like, conceptually, it's quite hard to think of them as products, right? So what we can do here is we can, for example, look at um, hiring an API product manager. So an API product manager is someone who's trained to really um, start with the value of the API and, and then move forwards. And they're used to working like on the business side, on the technical side, and bringing everything together. So if you're a product manager, um, go ahead and put your hand up. One, two, three. Oh, oh, wow, there's loads of you. I was expecting maybe one, but there's a lot of you, so that's pretty good. I'm happy to see that. So yeah, so um, th this you know, role, it's also recommended by Gartner, so you can go ahead and read that text. It's, it's basically saying, okay, um, to, to free you up from the, from the project side of things, then uh, go down the, the product way. Um, in, in terms of training, I think we discussed this a little bit yesterday as well. I don't think there's any like API product manager training, so you'll just kind of have to split it and say, okay, technical training and product manager training. Uh, as an example, I told you I'd give you this example. Here you can see you've got basically um, this uh, product vision board, which is from uh, Roman Piclier. He's like uh, one of the gurus in terms of product management. And what we can really do here is say, okay, when we're talking about the API, um, we, we can talk about it in terms of like this product and, you know, what is the vision, right? What is the vision for this product that we're looking to create? Really saying, okay, the target group, these are the people that we're actually targeting. Um, this is where they are. They have certain needs. You know, what are the, what's the problem we're trying to resolve here? Um, what would a potential product look like, and what are the business goals, right? So, uh, you, there's like many canvases out there, right? Let's try something, right? Let's try, okay, Google, AP op cycles. Okay, I, I hope to hear like a a large wave of phones going crazy then, but it didn't really work out. But mine went, at least that. Um, so uh, AP op cycles, or if you're Google, popsicles, right? Of course, yeah. Um, that's also a, a, a good, as we saw the two presentations ago. So I won't go into too much detail there, but now you'll probably remember it as well. You know, we have a coffee tomorrow morning, and your colleagues are like, so what did you learn then? And that was some really cool thing. You know, what was it? API popsicles, that's it, yeah. Um, so yeah, c coming back on track then, you know, um, it, it's again one of these uh, slides that we saw a little while ago, you know, you, you promised your CEO like this killer API that's going to, you know, do digital transformation for the whole company and save everybody, etc. right? It's a little bit of like this build it and they will come kind of mentality and maybe you have some vanity metrics like number of... Uh, developers who've signed up on your portal or a number of API calls this month or something like this. But, you know, it's really a question of, you know, how do you, how do you get to that really cool API that, you know, everybody wants to have, right? And, you know, my advice is to start with your mission and work forwards, right? So, Con, I'm, I'm really happy that someone took the time to sit down and really uh, thrash out, like, vision and uh, mission for the company. Um, and that's just fantastic. You know, our mission is to improve the flow of urban life, right? Perfect, right? 
you know, um, it's not too marketing oriented. It's, it's like, perfect, we're trying to make things better. Uh, it even goes like a level deeper than that as well. You can go ahead and read that. But basically what it's saying is that, um, you know, in between buildings, within buildings, we want people to be able to flow around. Uh, it's this whole people flow definition. And starting, if your company has like a good mission statement uh, and vision about what it wants to do over the next 10, 20 years, it's a really good place to like start and think about, okay, well, on the basis of like this is what the company wants us to do, why don't we make an API that does that? And then it's easier to sell it to the company because you're basically saying, okay, we're going to do exactly what we uh, said we would do as a company, right? Um, so here, here's a slide. Um, it's quite high level. We have some more like concrete examples of APIs, but we're just not quite ready on a marketing side to, to really show you those today, unfortunately. Um, but this, this is kind of gives you a, a, an idea, right? So we have like connected equipment, right? So it's the IoT thing of equipment and uh, hopefully over time we'll be able to extract more and more information from them and, and then make the, uh, the people flow better. Um, our CEO turned around recently, I think it was in Forbes magazine, and said that he wants to see um, elevators as iPhones on rails in the future. So really to have it like, you know, connected equipment uh, and to be able to interact with it, you know, music and so on, um, like that. So let's say that you did this like, you know, brainstorming session, maybe with a consultancy company, you come with a bunch of ideas, right? And then, you know, should you just start then creating these APIs and, and, and going out with them? Uh, does anyone think that you should do that? Put your hand up. Yes, that's what I thought. So, um, no, right, so at this point, you know, you don't really have an API or an API product, you have an idea for an API product, and you basically need to get out there, right? So there are existing tools that you probably already know of, you know, from Ash, you got the Lean Stack, the Venture Design Template, uh, Popsicles as well. You've got all these different tools that you can use um, there. Um, we're, we're sorry about that. <laughs> we, we, we've got um, we're doing some stuff with Futurist at the moment and a major airport nearby, um, and basically we're co-creating with those guys to say, okay, well, it's this whole people flow thing. So you've got a um, Airbus uh, A380 lands, and you've got like several hundred people who need to get into the airport and out of it as soon as possible, or transfer somewhere else, right? And it's moving massive amount of people around, right? So we went to visit them. We've done some co-creation sessions with them to say, okay, well, what information can we give you that you know makes your life better, right? So this is a fundamental part of it that you know when you're doing an API, especially as a developer. Or you, you kind of like to hide behind it, but you know you really have to get out there and talk to people, and um, and that, that's some of the stuff we did, and we found out some interesting things. Like you know, I was very elevator oriented in terms of like the products that we were thinking of, of building, and I found out that you know actually escalators are potentially more important to airports than than elevators because if you think about it, if you have this A380 come in, and one of your escalators is stopped, then you've got a few hundred people kind of like trying to march up the stairs, right? And in most cases, the, the airport um, doesn't even know that the, the escalator isn't working, right? So these kind of questions are the things that we're trying to address. And you can see, you know, I'm not talking about APIs and specific implementation of an API here. I'm talking about, you know, the value that we can bring and starting there and uh, moving forwards. Okay, so let's do a bit of exercise here, right? Everybody put your hands up. Yes, yes. Well, there's one there. All right, okay. You got your hands up, right? So keep your hands up if the API program you are working on, so if it's a consultant or whatever, already has a developer portal. All right, uh, the next one. You put your hands up if you're thinking of building one in the near future. All right, so... So yeah, so it's pretty much, you know, everybody either has one or is thinking about building one, right? So that's um, what I thought pretty much, right? So you're starting to think about like, you know, um, the developer making sure that the UX and DX is like sweet, rad or cool. I'm already a 41 year old dad, so I don't know what the cool words are anymore, right? I guess rad is probably still cool, I guess. Um, 
And you're thinking about like doing hackathons and things like this, you know, the standard kind of API program stuff. Um, but one of my questions going forward is, could be a little bit provocative, right? But it's kind of an assumption that you build a developer portal, an API portal, right? And that the developer is like kind of your customer, right? Which, if you are one of these companies, you can probably say quite firmly, yes, the developer is our customer, right? So if you're, you know, uh, Twilio, and I think Twilio of Boots and Grid now, um, they, they serve developers, right? Stripe, pretty much credit card processing. If you have an app and you want to process credit cards, you normally go to Stripe first, right? So it makes sense that when you look around in the industry for good examples of like developer portals or API portals, these are the companies that are standing out in that list, right? You really see, okay, yeah, Stripe probably have the, the best um, developer experience there is out there, right? But the question is, right, is the developer actually the user of the API product, but not the customer, right? If we come back to the, um, to the canvas we saw before, you know, it's very clearly, you, know, you put in there, you know, your channel, right? Who, who are the customers that you're addressing, right? And it's what you entered there at that point is kind of the, the people that you're trying to sell to, right? So it, it could be that actually the customers are actually like, you know, more business people, partner managers, product managers, et cetera, right? So in our case at Corner, this is more or less the truth, right? So we're building products and we don't like go directly to developers and say, okay, now you can see this uh, elevator or move it up and down or wherever. Uh, we'd never be allowed to do that. We have to go through the owner of the building first. And it's the owner of the building is really our customer and saying, okay, we provide you value by having this, this product, right? So what happens if we get like that facility manager and we show him um, an API portal that looks like this, right? Um, at, at this point, he would say, yeah, what am I supposed to do with that, right? A developer would look at this and say, okay, it's standard API portal. I took the Apigee one, which is like about 25 years old now, but it, it's, you know, documentation, access keys, whatever, right? So it, it's really a question of like, you know, who is your customer? Who are you trying to serve? And how do you present that in a way that they can understand it, right? And so I try to think about this a little bit, right? This is basically... Well, lean on your API products. So you have an API product manager, right? So you have these defined products with marketing text and videos and all sorts of cool things, right? That you can potentially put up first. And you show that even the developer can kind of look at this as well to get an overview about, okay, what this thing does. Uh, as long as you can sort of very quickly fast forward to like more of the technical details, right? But I'm still saying that, okay, developers are very important users of the system. You shouldn't just ignore developer experience. But in my experience, a lot of the time, you know, a developer is paid by whatever organization to go in and use these APIs. It might not be the case for you, but in, in my personal experience, um, developers, you know, they work in a project, um, and as part of that project, they're told, hey, go there, consume that API, and build it within our app, something like that, right? So developer experience, yes, important, but um, you've got to think about like, your, your primary customer. When they land on, like, for example, an API portal, if you call it an API portal, um, it could be like digital portal or something like that, that you serve your customer you know, basically first, get them in, and then transition slowly across to the developer side, right? So this like seamless transition. And I've, I've seen this a little bit in the past, but I'm trying to think at the moment about how to do this, right? This is like basically our work in progress. So if you've done this and you, you think you've really nailed it, then come and see me afterwards and uh, I'll buy you a beer and then we can talk about it. Um, I, I guess that's about all I got to say for, for now. So thank you very much. And, um, yeah. Thank you, Alan. Not only great presentation, but on time. <laughs>